first of all, Happy New Year. Happy 2024. This is New Year's Day 2024. And I'm getting ready to get the torque converter and bell housing on the engine. I did find all my bell housing bolts. I found my dowel pins for the bell housing to block. I even had them labeled driver's side and passenger side. There, we'll see. Passenger side. Uh, not bad for having took this thing apart 30 years ago. Uh, got the flex plate and already been cleaned up and primed. So got that. Got my flex plate bolts and nuts that attach it to the crankshaft. Starter bolts. So I am finding everything I need. So next is clean up the uh, mating surface on the block, get the paint off of that, and get get the dowel pins in. First thing I want to do is just chase the holes, uh, tapped holes in the block, uh, just with a thread cleaner. That, that should be fine. I, I try not to use a, a tap when possible because sometimes I've been, it's been explained to me that you can uh, just kind of enlarge the hole too much with a tap. I don't know. But I, I use these when I can. So let's do one of them. Three-eighths, uh, 16 thread. Just to make sure there isn't anything plugging them up blow it out good. I'm not going to bore you with doing all of these. Um, let me do them and we'll be back. Alright, next thing I'm just going to take a razor blade, get the bulk of the paint off the flange, and then I'll follow that up with a honing stone to make sure I don't have any nicks in it. And Do a final cleaning with some scotch right So nothing. Nothing real fancy. Uh, you know, most people probably wouldn't do this. And getting the paint off probably isn't gonna mean much, but I'm kind of anal about that. Making sure the surface is flat, though, I think is important. You know, you can use a honing stone for that. You can use a, uh, some sandpaper on a block. You know, about anything for that. All right, this is a fairly hard honing stone. And I'm going to use a little lubricant. Just a little bit. That don't need much. You can feel, you can feel when it's smooth, you can hear it also, but you just don't want any burrs that might have been made while the, or you're moving the block around while I was at the machine shop and all that, because uh, you want the bell housing to fit flat.
there were some burrs right in here, a uh, few places, so kind of expected that. And just give it a little quick final cleaning with some Scotch Brite. And I forgot my little uh, rifle cleaning brush to clean out the, the dowel pin holes. I'm going to go get that and do that. All right, nothing fancy here, just a rifle cleaning brush. I've got just a lot of different sizes I use for engines. And just get that dowel pin hole, both of them good and clean. my dowel pin just got to make sure that the uh, you got one end that has a little bit of a taper and so that's where the bell housing goes over it and this was the passenger side and I'll use a brass drift to get it in all the way well not all the way I'll put it in about that far. That ought to work. And I'll do the other one off camera. Now to the bell housing. I'm going to do essentially the same thing to the bell housing. I'm going to chase these threads here. I'm going to use the honing stone on the surface here. I'm not going to get this paint off because when I painted the transmission, I painted it with, on the, with it on the bell housing. So... But I'll get these other surfaces, clean out all the holes real quick here, and also uh, go ahead and use the stone on the on that uh, other bell housing surface too. So again, I'm not going to bore you with that. We'll just come back when that's done. Okay, bell housings clean, honed, clean. Uh, unfortunately, I dropped my hard honing stone on the floor because I had WD-40 on it, and it slipped out of my hands and it broke. So I've been needing to order some new ones anyway. So such is life. Uh, there is one tapped hole right here that I chased. So the bell housing ready. Go on after the torque converter is on, and I'll show you how to use the special tool to align the belt, the torque converter. Okay, next step is to get the flex plate on. Got flex plate and reinforcement. Uh, but first, I want to clean and put just a little lube on the pilot bearing. That's in the end of the crank. Uh, this is a little different in that it's not a manual transmission, so the stub on the converter doesn't spin in that bearing. It, uh, the converter spins with the crankshaft. It's not like a manual transmission where your input shaft will Kind of rides on that pilot bushing, but I still like to give it a little, just a little lubricant. And the flex plate goes on. I've already, I've already got these lined up correctly, so you don't have to watch me looking for the right position. 
but these bolt holes, there is one hole that's offset. point of putting the flex plate on and you the engine's assembled and you don't have your crankshaft bolts in you're hurting because on a V8 you've got to put the crankshaft bolts in I mean the uh, the flywheel or flex plate bolts in before you put the main bearing cap on so the pan has to be off I'm going to put just a dab of oil on each of these threads. I know some people say, oh, they should be dry. Some people say they should be lightly oiled. So, and these are, you know, these are special nuts, locking nuts that go on this. At times I've used uh, commercially available locking nuts, but these were all in good shape. Make sure that you get the uh, these bolts have a flat on them that rides against uh, a raised area on the crankshaft hub so you can tighten them up so make sure you get those positioned correctly I've got the thing ready to torque. Okay. So now we'll snug these up. And they get tightened to 35, 33 to 35 foot pounds. the engine is turning on me.
So, now we're going to get the torque converter snout cleaned up. I'm going to drain the old fluid out of it, put some fresh fluid in it, kind of just, and then drain that out, just kind of flush it a little bit, and, uh, and we'll get the torque converter bolted on. Okay, we're going to do a little cleanup of the torque converter. Uh, they do have a, a drain plug. Hopefully you can see it right there. I've already loosened this one up. They do, uh, sometimes they're pretty tight. I use the impact on this one. And we're going to see, we're going to try to drain it into this. Made a mess. Still making a mess. I was hoping I could rest the torque converter on the block, on the block of wood, but that didn't work out. Let's try that one more time. bring you back when we're done with this. Next thing I'm going to do is just a little bit of cleaning on this uh, pilot here. Just with some scotch Bright. snout, I'm going to polish it with some crocus cloth, fine cl crocus cloth, on the outside. snout rides on the seal, and or the seal rides on the snout, I should say. So you want to make sure that's smooth and clean, and that's doing a good job. I don't like using anything that's real abrasive on that. Uh, crocus cloth is very, very fine. I mean, they use it, I mean, I use this polished crankshaft drone. Good. 
All right, next, kind of the last thing here, after I wipe the snap off a little inside, last thing is I'm going to put some uh, automatic transmission fluid. I use the the Dexron, and I'm just going to put a little some in here to kind of flush. I'll pour this back out. Now, when I did drain this. I drained out a full, this thing was pretty much to the top, so I'm not sure how much that is, I'll figure that out, but it has some markings on there, but I can't really read them. Uh, quarts. So I drained two quarts out of it. So I will probably put two quarts of fresh fluid back in this uh, before I bolt it up to the engine. So anyway, I'm just going to do that a little bit. I'll do that a little more, then I'll drain it and it'll be ready to go ahead and bolt loosely to the flex plate. So I'm not going to put you through watching me slosh it around and drain it, but that's what I'm going to do. Is it going to help anything? Eh, maybe not, but yeah, I'm going to do it.